The most significant change to 3DS Max 2018 is the addition of the Arnold renderer. We're only going to take a brief look at Arnold in this course on new features. I've got a scene here that is illuminated by an environment for image-based lighting, and it's also got a simple key light on the figure here, on that sculpture. Let's open up the Render Setup dialog and go into the Arnold Renderer tab. And let's take a look at these general settings here under Sampling and Ray Depth. Don't let this intimidate you. These settings are actually very important and very helpful to allow you to exactly dial in the quality versus render time of your shot. Up at the top, we have anti-aliasing for preview and camera. This refers to the number of samples per pixel that the camera is going to shoot out. And there's a preview setting here that allows you to set a negative value for samples so that when you click the render button here, you'll get a general idea of what your shot looks like in a really rough, low-res version before the actual rendering begins. That's so you don't have to wait for a bunch of fully anti-aliased render buckets to appear on the screen before you get an idea of what your shot looks like. Let's do a render with just these default settings and see what it looks like. Click the Render button. Here's our first render with default settings. And you can see that it's a bit grainy in the background. The granite texture is rendering quite noisy. We're also seeing some artifacts in the gold material of the sculpture. These little speckles are sometimes called fireflies. And we can deal with all of that in the render settings. Let's go back over here and take a look at what these components do. Listed underneath camera, we have diffuse, specular, transmission, SSS, and volume indirect. Diffuse, of course, refers to the base color of a surface. Specular is the specular highlights and reflections. Transmission is transparency and refraction. SSS is subsurface scattering, or how light bounces around inside a solid object. And volume indirect is for clouds and fog and other volumetric effects. For each one of these render components, we can control the number of samples independently of the global number of samples here in the camera anti-aliasing. If I wanted to bump up the quality of the diffuse component, I could increase this diffuse amount here. And that would not affect the quality of the specular amount. I'm going to leave the diffuse and specular samples the way they are, but I want to play around with the ray depth over here. And that's the number of bounces. We're always going to get one ray per sample from the camera. And that's basically the visibility of that surface. If we add additional rays, then we're able to cause that ray to bounce off the surface and onto other surfaces. So the diffuse ray depth here controls the global illumination effect of light bouncing off of surfaces to illuminate nearby diffuse or matte surfaces. And the specular ray depth controls how reflections and specularity work. With one ray, we're seeing some nice reflections here. But if I reduce the ray depth for the specular component down to zero, then we won't see all of those reflections. I'll go ahead and click the render button. With no additional rays on the specular component, what we see is that we have big black areas on the model. My image-based lighting environment is showing up in reflections, but the nearby geometry is not appearing in the reflections. And that's because there are no additional specular bounces. I'll set this up to a value of one, which is pretty optimal. Unless you've got specular objects very near one another and you need some kind of a hall of mirrors type effect, the optimal ray depth value is probably one or maybe two at the most. However, the diffuse ray depth or the number of diffuse bounces usually needs to be increased. Only one diffuse bounce is giving us kind of a dark effect here in the corners. I'm going to increase the diffuse rays up to five and do another render. Increasing the number of diffuse bounces brightens up the shot. We don't have so many dark corners in our rendering. All right, so that's how we can give a little bit better global illumination effect. Let's clean up the grain in the rendering. We can increase the camera anti-aliasing samples up to five. And as we do that, all of these numbers increase. And that's an indicator that this camera AA 
samples parameter really acts like the global quality setting. Let's render once again. With five camera samples, our rendering took a bit longer, but now we've got a cleaner result. It's still a little bit grainy, but we're going to leave it at that for now. If we needed to completely clean that up, we might need to increase the camera anti-aliasing up quite a lot to values of 10 or higher. The one thing I do want to fix, however, is the appearance of the speckles in the gold material. And those are a bit distracting. So we can fix that back in the Arnold Renderer settings. If we scroll down a little bit, under filtering, we have this very interesting section here labeled clamping firefly filtering. And it's disabled by default. But if we want to get rid of these little fireflies or speckles, we can enable clamp sample values and change this maximum value because right now a value of 10 is not going to yield any result. I'm gonna bring that down to, let's say five. And what that's going to do is it's going to prevent these very, very bright pixels from basically blasting out in the shot. It's gonna clamp those down. Cool, so we'll do one last rendering and see what we get. And here's the result of our adjustments to the Arnold render settings to optimize render quality versus render time.